Hello, everybody. Uh, so yeah, my talk is going to be super fast because most of what's new in InfluxDB is actually the stuff I'm going to be talking about later today. Um, but really quickly, uh, so time series index is a thing that we created. We've actually been working on this for an incredibly long time. Uh, so the thing is, InfluxDB is actually kind of like two databases in one. There's the actual time series store, and for that we wrote you know, a custom storage engine, which we called the time structure merge tree. And the separate database is an inverted index, right? Normally you use an inverted index for like document search. So you match you know, terms that appear with document IDs and you have posting lists and stuff like that. So what we use the inverted index for is matching measurement name or tag key value pairs, that metadata with the underlying time series. Um, so in the current version of InfluxDB, we keep all of that in memory. And what that means is like over time, as you have more and more time series, right? You get high cardinality, it takes more and more memory. So what we've done with the time series index stuff is we spill it to disk and we memory map that and we've used a bunch of like different stuff under the hood to make it super efficient. Um, so we released uh, in November in the 1.4 version of Influx. Uh, we had a version of it uh, that you could enable um, and we've done a lot of performance optimization over the last few months to make it much, much better. So the 1.5 release, uh, we've cut a release candidate already. It should go gold you know, sometime in the next couple of weeks. Uh, but you still have to enable this feature. But what it does is it makes it so that you could potentially have billions of time series and it doesn't mess up your memory profile. Um, so the other thing we added in uh, 1.4 is we added the Prometheus read-write uh, support. So, and this is, I, I would say in 2018, this is gonna be a big goal of ours, is to support more and more of the Prometheus systems, the APIs, the ecosystem. Um, so this was basically just the first step on that path. So you can use Influx as uh, a storage engine for a long-term data store or whatever for Prometheus. IFQL, which I'll be talking about later today, is our new uh, query language. Um, so the, the thing we're changing, like basically we started with a SQL looking language, we, which we will continue to support. But my theory is that a functional query language is actually a better way to work with time series data. So with that, we also created a new query engine. Uh, so it supports federated queries. So you can point to multiple influx servers and we'll actually have support for other kinds of servers as well. So if you wanted to use it, this query engine is say a federated query engine for a bunch of Prometheus servers, we'll be able to do that. Uh, so yeah, 1.5, like I said, it has a release candidate out right now and we'll be cutting it in a couple of weeks. Thank you. <laughs>